So now we're going to talk about ordering and comparing integers and, and advanced absolute value problems. So for ordering integers, if you move, if you look at your numbers going to the left, they get smaller. And if you look at the numbers going towards the right, they get bigger. And, and notice that when you number your number line, it's like a mirror image of each other, except you have negatives on the left and you have positives on the right. And negative one is going to be bigger than negative two. Negative two is going to be bigger than negative three. So negative 10 is much smaller than negative one. You can think of it like owing somebody money. If I owe somebody a dollar, I actually have more money than if I owe someone $10. So negative one is larger than negative 10. So numbers get smaller as you move to the left and bigger as you move to the right on your number line. The bigger the negative number, the smaller the value of the number. So negative 1,000 is a really small number. So here we're going to practice by using less than, greater than, or equal to to compare integers. And a quick reminder, you read from left to right. So since we read left to right, when you're looking at your symbols, the symbol that has the small end first, because you read from left to right, so you read the small end first, that is your less than symbol. The symbol that has the big end first, because you're reading left to right, that's your greater than symbol. So everybody tell me if I would use less than, greater than, or equal for negative 4 and negative 7. Everybody. Right. Negative 4 is greater than negative 7. How about 5 and negative 5? Good. It's greater than. How about negative 10 and negative 3? Good. Negative 10 is less than negative 3. Next, we're going to put these integers in order from smallest to largest. So go ahead and give that a try and check back. Here's the answer to this first problem. Now, in the next problem, it will help you if you have either all fractions or all decimals. If you have all fractions, you have to get common denominators to, to compare them. So I think it's easier to change them all to decimals. And these are pretty easy to change to decimals. So change these to decimals and then put them in order from least to greatest and check back to see if you got them right. See if you got it right. So if I'm working with a problem, for example, the absolute value of 5 equals n. Here we would take the absolute value of 5 and figure out what it is, and that's what n equals. So what would n equal? 5. 5, right. Because the absolute value of 5 is 5. Now we're looking at some slightly different problems. In these problems down here, we know the absolute values. We're trying to figure out what number or numbers will give us those absolute values. So let's start with the first example. This is basically saying what number or numbers will give us an absolute value of 2. So both 2 and negative 2 will give us a distance of 2 on our number line. So what about the next one? Both 8 and negative 8 will give us a distance of 8 on the number line. And what about the next one? 200 and negative Both 200 and negative 200 will give us a distance of 200 on the number All right, in these examples, we're going to start working with inequality. In the first example, we're trying to find all numbers that have a distance less than 2 on the number line. And we're working with integers, so we're not working with fractions or decimals, okay? Just integers. So whole numbers and their opposites. So what whole numbers and their opposites will give us a distance less than 2? I want to start and break this question down a little bit, and I want us to think about all the distances, and we know distance is always positive. I want us to think about all the distances we could have that are less than 2. So we could have a distance of 0, and we could have a distance of 1. Those are the only distances that we could have that are, uh, would be less than 2. So now we want to basically find all numbers that will give us 
a distance of zero, so we're looking for this, and a distance of one. That's what we're basically looking for. So we would get one, zero, and negative one because zero will give us a distance of zero, one will give us a distance of one, and negative one will give us a distance of one. And the way we're going to write this is with what's called set notation. So we put a bracket and we put them in order from least to greatest. So what this is saying is that the set of numbers, negative one, zero, and one, will make this a true statement. The absolute value of n is less than two. In other words, negative one, zero, and one will all give us a distance that's less than two. Let's look at the next problem. I've changed this problem so that it says the absolute value of n is less than or equal to three. So if the absolute value of n is less than or equal to three, we first of all need to think about all the distances that are less than three. So let's list that ahead. So all the distances less than, less than or equal to three are zero, one, two, and three. So basically we're finding the following problems. Oops. We're finding where the distance is zero, the distance is one, the distance is two, and the distance is three. So we want to find all the values that will give us these distances. So see if you can figure that out. So since our symbol is less than or equals to, we include distances of 0, 1, 2, and 3 because of the equals 2 part. And so you can see the solution would be negative 3 through 3. And there's a short way you can write this, a short notation that looks like this. You establish what you're counting by. Then you put three dots and continue establishing what you count by. So you're showing the, the uh, beginning and the end of your pattern. And it means the same thing as what we wrote for our answer. All right, for the last problem, I changed this to the absolute value of n is less than or equal to 4. So we have to include 4. So try that problem. Here's the answer.